Well, hello YouTube. Um, so we're in the UK and at the moment it's pretty much on lockdown. So not much going on, not making many videos and neither are many other people to be honest. Uh, obviously at the moment pretty much staying in the house, uh, working from home as well, like many other people uh, and I'm fortunate to be able to do that. But today it's a Sunday and very little else to do. Did some cleaning around the house, did the windows and fixed a few bits and bobs. But just wanted to get um, a Vagtech and run it across the car and have a look at uh, what codes and errors come up. I know there'll be a few because I have been messing about with bits and bobs, disconnecting things, um, cleaning things, running things. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see what comes up. Usually um, there is a few codes, uh, the power steering being one, the rack was changed and that needs recoding but never seem to... Got, uh, got it to take for some strange reason but anyway let's connect it all up and um, have a look through and see what we got this is all live um, I haven't done it beforehand so you're seeing it as I see it it could be a massive shock anyway let's get on with it awesome pleasure finally the OBD slot Oh, there we go. We're in. She loves me as she needs to know I love her. I wonder if we'll make it through this summer. Just want to touch like back when we were younger. Yeah. Why don't you love me, love me, love me? Touch me, touch me, touch me, mama. There you go, that's cleared all the codes. So, gonna run it again and basically see what comes back. And there you go, that's what we have. So, gonna run through these and um, do some investigation. So, well, I seem to have a fuel rail system pressure, low or intermittent. Mm. Can't say I've noticed any problems. Let's clear it. No fault code found. So I think what that was, um, I was doing the cam follower a little while ago, but we shall see. So just going to run it again, yep yeah, that's good, no faults code, yeah that was the cam follower then, uh, obviously I let the, uh, the fuel pressure drop when I did that, so that's what that was picking up. Excellent, one down. Now another one that I looked at, another one I noticed, was the ABS. Um, I know it's thrown up a fault before the ABS, um, cleared it and it didn't come back again. So no, can have a quick look. Power steering control module. Ah yes, that is because the rack has been changed. So even though I clear that, I can guarantee it'll come back again. There you go, same thing. So I need to find out really how to, to code that uh, power steering rack in. Uh, doesn't affect the driving of the car, doesn't affect me, but um, it needs doing, definitely. Now, if I remember rightly, another one was the HVAC system. Um, I know this is going to have a fault because I had it to bits and cleaned it all up. So in theory, let's just read the codes. What we got? Um, okay. So it's got a fan problem, let's clear it. And no fault found. Okay, that's good. 
uh, if I remember rightly, um, a door lock came up as well. Um, again, pretty sure this is because I changed one of the door locks. Common air default. Uh, door locks basically, yeah, that's the one changed the passenger side a little while ago. Uh, basically, yeah, door lock stopped working, so typical AID problem on the A3. So let's clear that one. Yes. Oh, electric window motor, passenger side. Incorrect basic settings. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Then I'll have to look into that one. Seems to be working okay. Let's just check it. Yeah, oh, nice bit of uh, nice bit of polish on there that I didn't get. Yeah, that seems to be working okay. So I'm not quite sure. Let's clear that. Nope. Apparently, electric window motor passenger side. No incorrect basic settings. Let me just try something. So here's an handy trick. Works with a lot of cars as well. Put it down, hold the button for three or four seconds, put it back up, keep holding the button, hold it for three or four seconds, clear the codes. Hey, there you go. So I just needed resetting. Simple as that. That's probably when I had the battery off thinking about it. Excellent. So I think. I've got them all. That was easy enough. I say I know about the ones that are connected around the uh, both the radio because the radio has been changed for a newer navigation system, and the rack's been changed, so I know that comes up with an error as well. But quickly rerun it, and that'll do. Okay, so I've rerun it again, and like I say, I know about the ABS brakes ones. That's because of the steering. Strange, it comes up on on the ABS brakes, but uh, yeah, so be it. Okay. So, there we go, VACOM is run, or VCDS, or however you want to say it. Um, I'm not seeing anything that concerns me, worries me. And there you go, as I say, power steering, control module, implausible signal. Um, again, just because it's not been coded in, um, I need to sort that out, really. But, yeah, it doesn't affect me. <laughs> right, let's have a little look around the adaptations. So, now we're in. Let's have a quick look. So I want to go to coding, just there, and long coding helper. So in here you get lots of bits and bobs. Each one of these tags at the top here gives you all sorts of things. And if they're highlighted in blue with a tick, that means they're active at the moment. So as you can see there, bits and bobs, comfort turn signals, you've got uh, all sorts of stuff your headlights. Uh, I'm not going to mess about with those. Because I don't want to. <laughs> Activation of both rear fog lights. Nope, my car hasn't got two rear fog lights, so there you go. But, you know, this is a place to go into. You can do some damage in here, so be very, very careful what you're doing. Um, but basically, if I can find one that I can change, let me have a look. There's loads and loads and loads of stuff in here. Um, so, let's just say, for safety's sake, so. I've taken the rear wiper off. There you go. So, rear wiper installed. I've just taken that off. Okay. And basically, close that down there. And what that does is gives me the new code in there to say I've deleted the rear wiper. Now, if I wanted to do this, I would just press do it. Okay. And it would actually recode to take the rear wiper out. But I'm not going to because basically I've got one. So, there you go. Well, I'm not going to take you through this too much because I'm just having a little bit of a play myself because I'm really bored and it's a Sunday and like I say we're in lockdown in the UK but there's loads of stuff online for this. Do feel free to have a look around. There's some interesting stuff you can do but um, again be very careful because you can do you know, not some damage but you can mess things up and it's certainly with your headlights things like that you don't want to go messing with um, but you can do you know things like uh, make your car bleep when you unlock it, which is always entertaining. Uh, it double bleeps when you lock it again. Um, you can um, do it so on the key fob. Uh, you can bring your automatic windows down if it's not doing it already. Uh, not all cars will do that because the YCRD uh, convertible won't do that, but this one does. 
but basically you can just have a little bit of a mess about in here and um, you know find something that um, you know, basically you want to change want to set up okay but most of them are our central electrics in that one uh, I think also in instruments we'll have a quick look in there I believe there are some coding options in there as well um, so there, there you go it gives you prompts all the way along um, so it's good just to look at those and um, yeah, make some changes on those. One of the things I did quite early and when I actually bought the bit of the navigation, um, if I can remember how to do it now, if I remember rightly it was radio and you can do some coding off there and I think what you can do is, there you go, that's a handy one. So you can set the front screen up to show basically what sort of car it is. Now one thing I did want to have a look at, um, because one of the annoyances with the Audi navigation system is it keeps going louder and quieter. Even when you're talking in the cabin or just does it randomly, it's supposed to increase with road noise but uh, it just seems to have a mind of its own. So just looking at the values here, um, mm, speed dependent volume off well that's where i've got it at the moment so uh, i don't know i'm gonna have a little mess about with this and see if i can get rid of it so another thing you can do is output tests which is quite handy as well so we're doing output test now i want to do a sequential output test and basically just press start next and i'm going to activate Ooh, there you go. Treble front speaker works. Next is the bass. Yep, that works. <laughs> so I'm not going to go through all these, but as you can tell, you can test your trebles, you can test your bass speakers, and even all oh, those in the back. So if you think you've got a speaker that isn't quite right, then you can uh, check it and oof and make sure it all works properly <laughs> and the subwoofer as well um, there you go 